Hello. This reflection is based on 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 2 to 10. And I believe I already told you that I grew up in a small village of Saint-Simon on the south shore of Montreal between uh, saint Isaac and Ramonville on the Highway 20. My father was initially a farmer, which implied manual work. Uh, like being to a, being able to repair machinery and milking cows. My mother uh, stayed at home like many women of her generation. She was a good seamstress. And before my ordination, I asked her if she could make me a stole. As you can guess, as a good mother, she came up with many of them and this one being my favorite. Um, when I look at it, I can see the long hours she put in cutting all those small pieces to sew them together, to stitch them carefully, all of them, like she did for all the quilts her children and grandchildren still have today. And yeah, that's my favorite stone. So, with these two Andy parents, you might wonder, well, what's my special gifts? Well, to be honest, the greatest thing I can do with these finger is to type on the keyboard. That's about it. For example, a few days ago, I'm, I don't know if you see, I... I began to build those uh, bookshelves from IKEA and this is as far as I can go by myself okay my wife will have to finish them uh, sometimes I believe I became a minister because I have a big mouth and no coordination whatsoever Sometimes I feel embarrassed by this limitation. Sometimes I wish I could be just a little more like those who are good with their ends. Okay, this may be a strange introduction for the strange biblical passage we have this morning. The first epistle of Peter is one of the lesser known books of the New Testament. And despite its name, uh, almost everyone agrees that this text was not written by the famous apostle, but rather a non-known author who will live most likely a generation or two later. And one of the goals of this whole letter is to provide a consoling message to the early believer in Jesus who were experiencing the great anxiety over the progressive split between what we can call traditional Judaism and the movement that would become eventually Christianity. Nevertheless, both groups retain a strong attachment to the scripture. And this is probably the reason that out of the nine verses that make up our reading today, six of them are either alluding to or directly quoting the First Testament. In the passage for this morning, the author refers abundantly to cornerstones. And this must have resonate, resonate with the people back then because for centuries the Temple of Jerusalem has been the center of the religious life of the people of Israel. Originally built by King Solomon with numerous luxuries, reconstructed after the return from exile and extensively re renovated under the reign of Herod the Great, this majestic building was seen as the site of God's presence on the earth. And all of those who visited, and a lot of people visited, understood that a cornerstone was not just a random stone set at the corner of two intersecting walls. Sorry, it was the basis of the construction of the whole building. 
choosing the right cornerstone was not only important for the aesthetic of the building, it plays a crucial role in its stability and longevity. And the author used this image of the cornerstone to explain the need to build a new home, a new spiritual house with living stones a and with a different kind of cornerstone. He or she wrote, See, I'm laying a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. But then, but to you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that as the builders rejected has become the very head corner. Of course, Christian across centuries has understood that Jesus the Christ is this cornerstone rejected by the authorities of his time because of his revolutionary message about a new kingdom. And we consider his teaching and his miracles of great value. They make him precious for us. And for this reason, Jesus is nothing less than the foundation of a new sort of temple, which is not a physical building, but a spiritual sacred space. Because of him, the celebration of the presence of God can be done wherever the people of God are, even on Facebook Live or through this recording we have. The church is not limited to a single building nor a geographical location, but is extended to all who gather in the name of Christ Jesus. The authors explain that this church is made up of living stones, which is a strange combination of words because stones are, by definition, lifeless. But of course, this is an image inviting people to see themselves as part of an organic community, always changing, always evolving. And the sum of every individual constitute a consistent whole built on the foundation of Christ. And our forefathers and foremothers in faith have established strong foundation, create deep roots, and provide powerful witnesses in their own communities. And today it's our turn to bring our own brick to this building. The stone we offer are old, young, bra brittle, strong, shiny, fracture, solid, large, small, and all of them come in different size, shape, and orientations. But unfortunately, across history, some precious stones have been rejected for many different reasons, like race, gender, sexual orientation, social status, and so on and on. Many thought they were the real living stone the most important stones of their community. And they forgot. They forgot they did not own the church. It did not belong to them. No, this is God's church. However, they created a series of roadblocks and obstacles to keep undesired people out of their institution. They have told newcomers to fall in line and obey the, obey the rules because you're not from here, even if they've been living in the village for more than 20 years. They have asked some individual to hide their alternative lifestyle in order to blend in. They refuse to make room for everyone. And today's text reminds us that these typical human behaviors or way to evaluate people, well, they are not God's ways. God does not judge as the world judge. For God, everyone is important. Everyone has an important contribution to offer to the church. 
And for all of those who feel outside, alone, abandoned, this is a strong message of hope. Everyone can be part of something greater than oneself. Every life means something and is precious. Every individual can belong. And this new church that has Christ as its cornerstone, those who feel like a, a nobody can become somebody important and valued. Today's from First Peter invites us to be the church, which is way much more than a beautiful building, buildings we have erected in the past. Now we are asked to be living stones in our world today to create safe and welcoming places for those who have different abilities, gifts, cultures, experiences, and to build a new world even if we are not the endless ones. Now we are called to believe that the one who has been rejected 2,000 years ago can show us the way to build a better world. Thanks be to God, and Amen.